The NHL's delay stops at one extra day, and Theodore Niederbach scores a beauty at World Junior Championships. You're Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome back to the Lockdown Red Wings podcast. I'm your host, Brian Fisher. With me today, as always, is the other host here, Scotty Bentley, also host at Locked On Tigers. Want to thank you guys for making us your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And I want to thank all our listeners out there because we got our first ever YouTube episode across 100 views, which is doesn't seem huge, but for a startup YouTube channel like we are at, as as of right now, like that is that is big for us. That's seventy five more views than any episode thus far has garnered. Beauty, it's an abs. No, and like we, you know, we've been uh, we've been asking people to go watch. Then we had the big spike, and uh, it's awesome, man. People get to yeah, look at that. You get to see the you get to see the mug and my ugly mug. You just get to see all <laughs> all the mugs on. Uh, uh, on the show now. You know what else they could see? The sick locked on t-shirts that we got. That's true. Represent. Uh, rep the brand. The rep brand. The brand. I opened my mailbox and I'm going, what the hell? Why do I have Did this you get package? the other one too? The, the polo? The button? That thing's nice. Man. I'm wearing that to that work. I, nice. I'm repping both my jobs at the same time. <laughs> I mean, I'm going. I'm going out to like a fancy restaurant. That thing for real. I'm going to Little Caesars Arena. Game days wearing a locked on polo. Absolute beauty. We ball. We um, ball. So the NHL shifting gears. Um, they will indeed come back. We talked a lot yesterday about how we just couldn't foresee it coming back with the way that it's going. And the NHL turned around and said, uh, "Screw you guys. We are adamant." that we are coming back and they released a, a PR article today and there's a temporary change to the CBA. Some of which we already knew was coming, but it's official now, such as the formation of the taxi squads that start started on the day after Christmas on Sunday. And that runs through the 2022 all-star break to give you guys some details on that. Uh, clubs are permitted to assign a maximum of six players to their taxi squad. All such assignments will be subject to waiver requirements uh, as applicable, no individual player may spend more than 20 cumulative days on the taxi squad during the temporary formation period. And uh, players on loan can obviously only play for the NHL club during that time. And then all those players uh, can make no more than $1 million. So their contract has to be under a $1 million, which I think we mentioned yesterday. Um, and if the club has fewer than two goaltenders on the active roster who are able to play... Um, it will be permitted to recall a goaltender immediately without the club playing the previous game with fewer than two goaltenders. Uh, there's a couple other small details in there, but that that is what the NHL decided it's going to do to in in order to continue the game. And we talked about it yesterday. I mean, it was the taxi squad is was a no brainer, and to the fact that they 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 got rid of it, I think they were hoping that it could be a normal season. But with just the fact that COVID still exists, COVID is still evolving, and that when it gets cold out, diseases spread more. I think in hindsight, it's easy to say in hindsight, but I think in hindsight, it was short-sighted to get rid of the taxi squad and they should have brought it back sooner than they did, but it is here now. It'll help the Red Wings. It'll help every single NHL team get through these COVID outbreaks because the NHL is adamant to play these games because it's all about that money. Yeah, absolutely. That that's the, uh, that's the reason. And, and, you know, obviously all the fans want a season two and, and everything. Um, the the taxi squad i if there were odds on botonline.ag about i wouldn't be like, surprised if there was they got everything about, more more props odds and uh lines than ever before guys than ever before um if if there is a a prop on there about like the odds that the taxi squad is actually gone by the all-star break or if it gets extended through the season, I would bet my mortgage that the taxi squad is going to be something that remains through the season 
Um, I, I don't, I don't see this just like, Oh, like, look, we, we did this and we, we shut down the league for a little bit and people started coming off and now like everything's fine again. Like, I don't think it's like a random spike that just like happened. I think that's look around in the world. Like that's just how, how, uh, the country and the world is right now. So I, I think the taxi squad's here to stay, but that being said, Taxi Squad's kind of an interesting layer that's added to it. And like you said, we saw it last year. And um, the, the requirements for players that are allowed to be on it makes it super interesting for who they choose and who they don't choose. Um, yeah, it'll be, it'll, be, uh, it'll, it'll be a great addition, obviously, given the times. But um, it, it, it adds another layer of like roster management that's kind of fun to follow, too. Well, and that's exactly where I was going with this, the roster management aspect, because there are there are names down in Grand Rapids you would immediately assume would be uh, guys that would get called up for the Detroit Red Wings. But because of the fact that these guys on the Texas squad are still, um, they're not waiver exempt, they can they still have to go through waivers, Danny, the Red Wings are calling up players you necessarily wouldn't expect. You would expect them to call up guys like Calvin Picard to be the goalie as Nadelkovich is still in COVID protocol. Nope. Uh, they decided to call Victor Br- uh, Bratstrom instead. Because if you put Calvin McCard on waivers, there's a chance that he might actually get claimed because he is a fringe NHL backup. And so you don't want to lose him. The other players they assigned are Luke Wachowski, Dan Renouf, and Riley Barber. Uh, Dan Renouf, baby. He's back. Um, My boy. But, Dan yeah, Renouf. Dude, top pair defense the dog. Dan Renouf. The absolute uh, dog. But all four of those guys are safe bets to not get claimed off waivers. I think the only one who would possibly get claimed off waivers is Dan Renouf because he's got, you know, solid NHL experience. He could be a, a fringe defense. Greatest defenseman of all time. Right. Well, oh, yeah. Greatest defenseman of all time. Better you, than you Bobby. Pair, or better than Nick you Kisinski. pair Dan Renouf with Moritz Sider and it's over. I it's, it's over. It's over for the league. They might as well, they might as well shut it down because it's, <laughs> it's over. Fun fact. Dan Renouf's nickname is the perfect human. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly everybody calls him that it's his family guy. his family calls him that everybody calls him that it's it's Dan Renouf man Greatest so I mean, th- those are guys who you know you're not worried about losing on waivers when you do have to send them down but they're guys you can slide into the lineup you can just fill holes but thankfully the Red Wings are getting some uh relief as a bunch of players came off COVID protocol today Carter Rowney Giovanni Smith, the you know the greatest player of all time himself. Dog, uh, it's crazy. You have two greatest players of all time on the Red Wings, Dan Renouf. And no, Giovanni no, no. Smith. I have Dan Renouf's the greatest defenseman. Oh, yes, of correct. All time. Giovanni okay. Smith is the greatest <laughs> player. I can't believe you just said that and screwed it up that badly. Oh, well, man. we can move on. Well, that's two episodes in a row. I've screwed up something so badly. <laughs> uh, Pew Suter, head coach Jeff Blaschel, and assistant coach Alex Tange. So I think out of everything, those two are probably the biggest names to come off COVID protocol. Yes, so, I, I think both of our coaches, yeah, <laughs> coach huge. and next in line, uh, coming back is probably the the biggest addition for sure. And so you got a bunch of players coming back, so you can actually you know ice a roster at this point. It's still a thin roster, especially without Lucas Raymond and Nick Letty and Alex and I mean, those three are huge minutes eaters for this team. And Raymond and Dalkovic, obviously, uh, impactful rookies from day one. Um, they're still out, but the Red Wings are getting back to a point where they can um, ice a hockey team. But this COVID surge isn't over. And uh, it sucks to say this, but I'm looking at a roster where there's still players on the team who haven't caught it. And with how transmissible this Omicron variant seems to be, although we haven't gotten confirmation that it's Omicron that's raging through. I guess that's just an assumption on my part. But it seems like every player in the league's catching it at this point. So I almost assume that it's coming in due time. And so the taxi squad is just, a, it's a no-brainer. And I'm glad it's here because if the NHL wants to continue the season without straight up postponing, postponing it for another two weeks. I mean, this is what they got to do. Yeah, they, they have to. And, and like you said, the taxi squad is a great, a uh, great move as well. It gives teams a little bit of a barrier. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean that along with uh, the new, just like countrywide CDC, whatever statement guidelines that were, that were made um, over the last what day or so that yeah, yes, you know right. now now quarantine like they only recommend five days after instead of 10 now so um the the nhl is probably going to take that and, and run with it i'd imagine that they'll take that as their uh, somewhat to an extent of their new policy but again we've talked about it before 
the NHL has to balance two different countries' policies. Um, so it'll be interesting to see kind of what what line they follow and what path they go down. But um, I mean, we'll we'll see. Um, I'm glad hockey's back. Uh, I, I'm not holding my breath that, uh, that you know this won't happen again. But Taxi Squad is a great first step. Uh, the entire league sans. Uh, a dude named Tyler being vaccinated, another great step. And, and hopefully we can have a, we can have a season and everyone can stay healthy. That's, that's obviously the the goal. Yeah. Uh, we, it, it'll be, if it does go down in five days, I think that'll be a lot of relief on a lot of teams. But like you said, Scotty, with them bouncing Canada, you don't know if Canada's even following the CDC. They might have their own. I don't know if Canada has their own version of CDC. I don't, I don't know how Canada works. <laughs> Canada's an alien to me. Um, even though they're literally like 20 minutes away right, from yeah. my house. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, it, it'll be interesting to see what the, what this league does with the new guidelines, if anything at all, maybe they just stick with their 10 day policy from until the end of the season. But going forward, you know, you could see some changes that'll make it easier on everyone. Um, but we'll transition into talking about world juniors. Um, but first, I got to talk to you guys about betonline.ag. BetOnline has you covered this holiday season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football continues its march through the college bowl season and the pro football playoffs. BetOnline remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. Head to their website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% locked on bonus on your first deposit. Just use their promo code locked on to receive your bonus. From basketball, football, NHL, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports, so don't wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers available. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, Scotty, let's move into talking about the World Junior Championship. It's been going on. It's been a consistent part of our lives the past few days, helping us get through this work stoppage in the NHL. And uh, the NHL prospects continue to play pretty well. Uh, the most notable game from Monday's slate is the Sweden versus Slo- Slovakia game, which that game is still going on as we talk. It is the third period. It should be winding down here shortly. Um, but Theodore Niederbach, man, he had an absolute freaking rocket in the first period, assisted by William Eklund. And then Grant's... Um, Helg Grands, who I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that name right, but is that it was a one timer from the slot, a beautiful pass from Eklund behind the net. That that Theodor Niederbach, that shot looked legit, and I am so excited to see him in a Red Wing. Just there's so many prospects who I genuinely look at this World Juniors I'm like he'll be in a Red Wings uniform, he'll be in a Red Wings uniform. That Theodor Niederbach goal looked outstanding. I mean, it was it was a one time for the one time, baby. He got down on one knee. He he was he 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 cranked that. That was a uh, that was an absolute rocket, like you said. I mean, it was uh, I, it was a beautiful play all around. Honestly, I mean, that was good hockey to watch. Um, good good passing, heck of a setup, like you said. Uh, but that I mean, that was that was a a shot out of a cannon rifle. And uh, the, the reaction from his teammates and stuff was awesome, too. Everybody was kind of freaking out. It's, it's cool to see, like, the players be like, oh, my, like, just like we are. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's always fun. But, yeah, no, absolute rocket. And, and he's looked good. Yeah, and he's not going to be – and he, he looks really good in World Juniors playing against guys his own age. And part of that's mm-hmm. because he's playing professional hockey in Sweden right now. He's pl- currently right. playing for Frulunda in the H- SHL, which is, like, the best Swedish hockey team. Correct. As far as my knowledge tells me, at least. No, yeah, like um, when during draft season when we were doing draft profiles, man, like I I want to say pushing fifty percent, and that might even be on the conservative side of all the uh, the international Swedish prospects that were draft eligible all played for them. Yeah, yeah, it's like the team to play for if you're going to play in Sweden. And he's not wowing at in the SHL with Frölunda. He's got. Uh, six points in 28 games. But the point here being is that he's playing prof- one of the best professional hockey leagues and with one of the best teams. And he's playing, you know, he's, he's a young kid who's playing. He's only 19 years old and he's playing with these people. You know, he's not Lucas Raymond and not everyone's going to be Lucas Raymond and make the Red Wings at 19 years old. He is progressing at a great rate and you can see it when he's playing with guys his own age. I believe that's his second goal. I think he had a, he had a goal just the other night. 
uh, if I'm recalling correctly, or an assist, rather. Um, and this goal tonight, he just looked absolutely... He, it, it was, was a it, rifle. It was a rifle. It's the only it, thing it looked... special besides put himself in the right, right spot. Right. But playing against his own age, his own competition, it was a great shot. It looked, and this is not me comparing... Do it. The two of them at all. It's not. No, it absolutely is not. But it, the shot, just the shot, just the seven-second clip, looks like Ovi. I mean, my, like, down on one knee, rocket. Like, it, it was electric, man. Not comparing them, though. Not comparing them. No, not, not at all. Them. No, no absolutely I, not It's funny because I was going to say that he looked like Brett Hall from the right side, but that's a similar, similar yeah, comparison. Fair enough. Yeah, sure. Yeah, because same, same thing. They did the same thing. Ovi and Brett Hall both had that going down to one knee, one timer from the slot, but they did it from the left side rather yeah. than the right. Well, yeah, true. True. Yeah. yeah it, it was kind of weird to see it being on the right side with the puck coming from the right side too. You know what I mean? Like usually it's a, it's a crease to crease thing or a cross ice thing, or, or you're setting somebody up on the opposite side. And that one was the puck was already on the right side. And then he was a state on the right side, and just found an opening and let it, let it ride, let it rip. Yeah. So Sweden just continues to look like an absolute powerhouse, especially with Jesper Wallstedt and net. I, yes, you know, Tony. Yes. Jesper Wallstedt, the, the man, the man, the dog. And I, I don't know if, uh, I, 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 I don't know, man. Team Sweden suddenly looking like the team to beat. I know I thought, I know when we had Tony on and we were talking about uh, the teams and Team Canada is stacked too. And I'm not going to deny that. And I said Team Canada then. And Tony said he thought Team Sweden was going to win it. And I'm starting to come around to his point of view because watching this game with Simon Edvinson, with Peter Niederbach, with William Eklund, with uh, Jesper Wallstedt. I mean, this team is is super stacked themselves. And I feel like people sleep on these Swedish prospects in these Swedish leagues because they're not immediately in our, in our point of view. You know, we see the Americans right. and the Canadians playing constantly. We don't really get to see that much of the Swedes. And now you're singing. It's like, Oh yeah, these guys dominate their pool too. Yeah. And, and I, I think, I, I mean, having Wallstead is, is so, <laughs> that's such a cheat code. You know what I mean? Like that's, that that's one of the biggest advantages of the entire tournament. And he has looked incredible um, as everyone knew and, and thought he would, but um, it's, it's, I, I mean, Eklund and Walston on the same team doesn't really seem fair. And I know like Canada is absolutely stacked every single year and they have everybody and whatever. And, and it'll be a, uh, if that ends up being the, uh, the championship game, that that would be electric, and I think everyone would love to see that. And and hopefully, if Canada actually decides they want to play Sebastian Kosa, it would be Kosa versus Wallstead, yes, which would be cool, yeah. especially for Wings fans. That would be very cool. Um, but uh, I mean, having having Wallstead in that is is such an advantage that no amount of of like stacked roster of of forwards or D men or whatever that Canada may have. Um, I mean, nothing, nothing can really trump having yes for Wallstead as your goalie. You know what I mean? He's, he's something else. No. Yeah. It, it makes it hard to believe that the wings passed on him when you it watch does. him balling out. It often does. But we also haven't gotten a real, ch I mean, coast is the man though. And we, ha yeah, yeah, we haven't been able to, to, cause Canada's weird. So we haven't been able to see him yet either. And, and he's, not having a bad year this year by he's any having a great year he's having a phenomenal team. year yeah so um yeah well uh well i I'm, I'm really just hoping canada actually decides they want to play their best goalie that'd be right. super cool for all of us the other team of note for red wings fans would be team finland uh they beat austria seven to one austria sucks so it shouldn't be that big of a surprise uh you know they're just they're not the same level as those northern european teams and the american teams um Emil Vero in this game played 17 minutes, was a plus one, had three total shots on net, didn't produce a point. You know, he's a bottom six forward for Team Finland. He's just okay. I don't expect him to be in a Red Wings uniform anytime soon. Uh, his next step would be AHL. He might need a few years there. So not much to really update on that front. Yeah, no, not not really. It's still um, the, the – 
even if they're not like top of the line prospects or whatever, it's still just fun to see your guys out there and just yeah. have someone to watch for when he's out there. But yeah, no, no really advancements or anything. And uh, when we come back, we'll do a quick little happy birthday to one of the Red Wings all time legends and all time in a little bit of a different way. Final segment, Lockdown Red Wings podcast, and we just want to wish a very special birthday to Mickey Redmond, just one of the one of the most unique television personalities in sports. Uh, Mickey just never, never stops and takes a moment. No, that's not what I'm trying to say. He's never short of an interesting thing to say. Let's say that he's he is a riot. He absolutely is, and uh, he is not afraid to uh to tell it how it is i guess no he's not 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 afraid to uh to to call somebody in the wing we allow you know a lot of you see a lot of other broadcasts from around the league that are uh like super biased and while he is still a red wing through and through and and, he'll admit it and loves the organization right and and will admit when he is biased he is certainly not afraid to uh to call somebody out on something that's for sure Oh, and that's the, I think outside of the Mickey isms, which are probably like the thing he's most famous for is just the, you know, the ginger ales and all that. Um, like the holy jumping is his, yeah. is his catchphrase. <laughs> he's, got, he's got so many, man. Oh, honestly, like singing piano, man. I mean, my oh, goodness, yeah. just he, he's the dog. That's the man. But like you said, the, the ability he has, one, he knows the game very well. Incredibly um, well. And I mean, that comes from playing NHL games and he was the first Red Wing to ever score 50 goals in a season, which, you know, can't be stated, understated uh, because he was a very good hockey player when he did play. But it gets I think a lot of people don't realize it because of the era of wings he played for. Mm -hmm. But the fact that like the captain, by the way. Yeah. Like, I I don't think for for as much uh, like lore and and like big names and stuff that get talked about and and the stories that get told about being the captain of the Detroit Red Wings and like how it's one of the being the captain of this team is like one of the biggest honors in all of hockey right and and how much that's like I feel like it kind of slips through the cracks a little bit and and uh and isn't talked about as much that Rick Mickey Redman was was the captain not not for too terribly long but he uh he he was and yeah fifty goal scorer I mean Mick, 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 Mickey 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 was nice with it yeah and uh, going back to what you said about his, his uh, unbiased opinions and it's true like and when I say unbiased he has a bias and he's not afraid to admit it but the fact that he's not afraid to call a player out when they make a bad play or they're playing horribly is what makes him so valuable because you'll get so many players for players turned play by play in color or just player play by play guys in general who are so completely biased and blind to their own team that it uh it, it kind of ruins the call but listening to the TV broadcast is only strengthened by the fact that he will say what the truth is he's not and he'll be like oh the refs made a horrible call there but hey it benefits the red wings so we'll roll with it right yeah, he's right i mean it was he a does it call. all the time too <laughs> like all, like it it's not a once in a blue moon thing. I mean, he he is really uh, he is he is a national treasure. He, he really is. is. And, and and now that they that you know the, in the last whatever decade and and with social media and him being on screen for more like they they have like the the screenshots of like him doing funny stuff. I mean, just just everything about Mickey Redmond, man. Well, and then on top of it, like my favorite moment of his is actually a really recent one. It was the piano man. We have a couple of the clips and the clips, of course, are our fa- more favorite moments. But I think my most favorite moment is from this last season where he totally didn't swear on live television. Yeah, so said, right. That's the best bleep and power play of all time or the best pe- pe- uh, bleep and power play of the, in the last four games right, or whatever yeah. he said. And he he, I can't remember what they said he said, but if you listen to that clip, and I'll throw it in as the bump back, if you're listening on Spotify, Apple, or you know any of the audio ones, I'll throw it in as the bump back from um, 
from the second segment into the third segment so you can listen to it. And it sounds like you're saying that's the best F in power play in the last it does. four games. And I can't remember what the excuse there they used, what they said. There was huge controversy. Yeah. You, they're like, oh, he didn't say that. Uh, oh, I, I literally can't remember what they said he said. It was like, always said the freaking. best. No, it was like, it, it was like, it was like two oh, words. Looking. Looking. Yes, it was looking. Yes. Well, that's the best looking power play in the last whatever, like all season or something. Everybody's like, no, I don't think he said look. I'm pretty sure he said an F there. I'm pretty <laughs> sure I heard F, not ooh. Iconic, man. Iconic through and through. Just makes everything battle. Bet battle? Oh my battle? God. Makes everything better. What am I battle? saying? No, uh, he does. And he's where where do you think he ranks? In the city of Detroit's broadcasting. See, that's re- ooh, that's a good one. Are we talking about duos or just individuals? Individuals. Oh, I would say for duos, I mean, him and Ken are the top currently. Yeah, but Ken Cal does a great job too, and P- Paul Woods. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. And then of course Dan Miller on the Lions radio broadcast is exceptional. Dan Dickerson on the Tigers radio broadcast is ex- exceptional. Yeah. I guess we're kind of blessed in Detroit Red Wings media with play-by-play voices. Um, we oh absolutely and, and like color and, and, and right and and you know we had we had Mario and Rod for so long like there's Bad. they're right and the and, chair got involved. Yes. Uh, and and then uh, I mean. You know, Blaha for he he gets some crap now and then he's getting a little bit older. But like, I mean, Blaha has been the voice of the Pistons for longer than I've been alive. You know what I mean? Like that. <laughs> like there's there's so many. We we really are as a as a as a city, just all for all sports. Uh, very very uh, blessed over the years. I man, I was like looking stuff up and doing the other day, and um, the fact that Ernie Harwell handed off to Dan Dickerson is wild. Like how yeah. lucky of, of a fan base, you know, like literally no one in between, literally the handoff was Ernie Harwell to Dan Dickerson, like just as a city. So, so blessed. And, and uh, yeah, I, I would say Mickey Redmond is, is, uh, is certainly one of the, the bigger reasons as to why we can say that. Yeah. It's been, it's been a very, if you're listening to re- uh, sports broadcast in the city of Detroit, for the most part, you're pretty fortunate because it's it's been pretty high quality for almost every single team and television or radio, almost all of them. Absolutely. Um, and Scott, you got any final thoughts, my man? It's almost time. It's, it's almost, almost time. time. Go it's blue, baby. Closer. It's almost time. Can't wait. I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Red Wings your first listen every day. Now make Locked On Bets your second listen, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked On Bets hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It is free and available on all platforms. We'll be back with you guys tomorrow with, oh my God, a Red Wings preview. It's a miracle. We made it. They are going to play the Islanders. I... we. How do we do this? I forgot. I uh, it's been a minute, man. I mean, we've got you know they were uh, they were our get right game a while ago. I want to say like three ish weeks ago they were our get right game because they've been not very good. Now they're our get started game. <laughs> right now they're they're our they're our pick me up pick me back up game. Let's keep bullying them. That's what I have to say. Damn right. I'm just going to be – it's really going to be an interesting preview looking at what players are available for both teams. That's going to be the entire preview. There's yeah. really not – like like we know the team. We know what they're they're going to do. We know our strategy, obviously. We know our game plan. It's literally just going to be a preview of who's actually dressed. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, <laughs> we're going to bring that to you along with more World, uh, World Junior Championship talk uh, tomorrow on Wednesday's episode. So stay tuned. Same time. Same place. It is your team every day. Every day.